What is up guys? It is the hobbyist, formerly known as Scott, a King Queen Cichlids, bringing you an entirely new format. Now, I've scrapped everything because I've kind of been in a funk, and when you get in a funk, what I've always done when you get in a funk is you kind of scrap everything, you try something new. And today, sisters and brothers, this is definitely something new for me, and hopefully it's going to be something new for you. Uh, we pre-recorded this four or five days ago, and I've watched it probably three or four times, and I listened to it three or four times, and it's, it's entertaining for me, and I'm hoping that it's going to be entertaining for you as well. So what we have here for you is an hour-long podcast with not only me, but two of my favorite YouTube creators joining in, and we talk fish, we talk fish shows, we talk fish conventions. I'm super excited about this podcast. As I said, it's going to be about an hour long. Uh, you can watch it multiple ways. I mean, you can watch the first half, come back and watch the next half. I'm hoping that you're going to be so entertained and so into the podcast that you're going to want to watch it all the way through. But you can do that. You can watch it all the way through. You can break it up in halves. You can actually just listen to it without the visuals and really get immersed in it and really enjoy it. It's, it's that addictive, in my opinion. Or you can visually watch it, and I've put in uh, everything I could think of to make this enjoyable for people who want to actually view and see us talking about all the various things that we talk about. All right, guys. Let's go. I hope you enjoy it. And remember, you can just listen to it or you can visually watch it. Either way, it's going to be good. Let's go. For me to get started, I want to, I, the first person I thought of is we got to have someone with a lot of energy, brings life to the party. And there's only one person that I thought of immediately that every time I see him on a live feed, I leave wanting more. He does a couple of live feeds for his channel. He's on other people's live feeds. The guy is incredible, and that is Mr. Oh, Kenny E from Danikin Aquatics. Let him bring him in the room. What up, Scott? What's what going on, brother? What's up, Kenny? It is so good to see you. Let me bring your channel up so everyone knows where to go to. If they are not subscribed, please, guys, check out Kenny E and his lovely wife at Danikin Aquatics. You will love his channel. I promise you. How's it going, buddy? I'm doing great, man. Thank you so Glad much. Glad to be here with you. Going to talk some fish. We're on it. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Now, I'm going to talk about my second guest. I call this man the man without fear because God bless him. For months, he gave us daily updates of him building a plywood tank. And I told this guy to stop giving all, you know, stop showing us everything. Stop doing live streams when he's actually putting water in it. The guy has no fear. I would, if I build a tank, I would not film it live getting filled with water. I would just would be scared something <laughs> happened. Not Chris. Chris has no fear. So, Chris, I'm going to bring Chris in the house. My good friend. Uh, I spent a lot of time with Chris. Chris is from a multi tanks addiction. Say hello, Chris. Hello, hello, hello. Come on. What up? He's what up, Chris? Man now. What is up, Chris? <laughs> Let me bring up your logo real quick. If you guys have never heard of Chris in Multitank Addiction, definitely check him out. He does a stream. It's almost like a diary, Chris. Is that right? I mean, yeah, I do a diary of a fish keeper videos once a week. And it's, then it's ingenious. I love it. I mean, he talks about what he does during the day, he shows it. You actually type the words in. It's ingenious. Yeah. I wish more people would check it out. So, if this is the first time you're hearing about Mark Tank Dixon, go to his channel, check him out. He's awesome. He's not only a good fish keeper, Scott. I don't know if he dropped you that. I don't know if you're a member of his channel, but he dropped a little video the other day, a little music video. I saw <laughs> that. I like fish. I like fish. I like fish. 40 breeders like and a one. <laughs> What that was just playing <laughs> around. I know us about that because you know I did a song too, big cichlid song. All of my hobby life, I've been keeping big cichlids. And uh, I saw your song, and it's pretty funny. So tell us about that. Okay, so I was. The whole story behind this was I was looking for background music for a Diary of a Fishkeeper video. 
<laughs> and I've, I, you know, I'm clicking on music in the in the audio library in YouTube, and I got this little tune, and I'm I'm sitting there listening to it, and I'm like, yeah, this is kind of perky, and then all of a sudden I hear myself going, I like fish. I like, fish. I, like fish. I like fish. And I was like, I could make a song with this. Yeah. yeah. And how did that go? <laughs> yeah. There's a reason why I sing like William Shatner. <laughs> Unfortunately, Chris, I'll say it, it did what it was supposed to do, though. That stuff stuck in my head the rest of the afternoon. Thank you very much. We give you a 10 for effort, Chris. That was awesome. Yes. I did check it out. So, well, yeah. I, it was, it was all in funny games and it ended out. It actually took me a whole week to do that. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, I started it on You're Saturday. The lyrics, I love fish. <laughs> yeah. Well, not just the I like fish, but there was, I mean, I got the, the I like fish part, and I the fish are cool. Fish are great, or fish are cute, or whatever. <laughs> those two little par parts down at the bottom, I got those right away. It was finding something to say in the chorus that didn't just, like, that didn't make, I mean, it had to make sense. Yeah. So, well, uh, if that doesn't make you want to go check out Chris's multi tech addiction <laughs> channel, nothing will. So, guys, I got to oh, tell you Lord. this. I have my camera and my computer located in the wrong direction. So you're going to be seeing me look down at these guys when I should be looking at with the camera. I'll have that fixed next time. These guys are professionals. They're all looking straight ahead, and, and it looks good. But every time I look, I'm looking down because I'm looking at you guys on the screen. So sorry oh, about okay. that. So, the only reason why I'm looking at you when I'm looking at, this, at the screen is because my camera is on top of my monitor. So, <laughs> no, Scott, you got to get some of these polarized lenses, then you kind of fool them. See how mine are kind of <laughs> aging colors. You don't know where I'm looking, baby. I'm just kind of right, looking. Sunglasses on. There you go. <laughs> all right, guys. So, I'm so uh, thank you first of all for both of you coming. You guys know I've kind of been in the dumps. I appreciate you being here. But I, I've always liked, pardon the inter interruption, you know, the sports channel kind of po yeah. podcast. kind, of, And I kind of want to have something similar where the three of us just have fun. We talk fish. We talk smack. We do whatever we want to do. Just put on it and have a great time. It's, I can tell you, what, three minutes in, I'm already having a great time. <laughs> and I'm already forgetting all the pains and, and sorrow that I had before. So. so, Scott, is this the part where I'm supposed to say, listen up, knucklehead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, as you guys know, I'm a shit starter. Yeah, we can curse on this channel. So, I'm going to bring up <laughs> something that I saw in a chat group between me, Chris, and Kenny. And that is, Chris says, it's official. I have a plane ticket in a hotel room for Dallas. And Kenny E, and I, I like Kenny more and more when I see some of this stuff. You being a single guy, why would you not go to ACA in St. Louis instead? LOL. Chris? Acquiring minds want to know, Chris. <laughs> what the Hello? hell is the matter with you? You've been to Aquachella before. You've never been to the ACA. ACA is the first organization that, that ever organize anything to promote and teach about cichlids, and you're going to a YouTube. And I'm a member of the ACA. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so um, tell us what's going on. What, why are you going that direction? Well, I have, I have a, a couple reasons. I'm, He's stuttering, my, Kenny. The first, the first event. Yeah. Don't worry, Chris. Yeah. Don't worry, the Chris. We'll wait. I've ever been to <laughs> was the aquatic experience. I'd never been to any other event before. I'd never been to an ACA event. I, I had. I mean, the closest thing to being in, at an event was being a member of the, the Greater Portland Aquarium Society. I'm going to talk to him about that in a minute. Awesome. <laughs> now, Chris, that's but, not true because I recall another event you and I both went to. We saw each other that weekend. Uh-oh. No, that wasn't two years that, ago. That is considered an event. Yeah, but... The Aquatic the first, Gardeners Association. That is an uh -huh. event. Oh, the it AGA, sure is. yes. It sure that is. That was technically the first one that I'd ever been to, but thank, thank you. you. I'd forgotten about it. But <laughs> lasting impression ahead on you, huh? <laughs> All right, and <laughs> we got him, Kenny. Don't worry, got Kenny's him. Gonna have your turn too. Don't you worry. I'm gonna be right there with you on that one. Um, I, I've been. I've only been to one, technically. Before, I mean, after the AGA, of course. But the, it's the only first. It's the very first fish show that I'd been to, you know, where it was focused on fish and art. And, you know, I'm an artist and Absolutely. 
Uh, I have some of your fine pieces in my house. As do I. And I, I just, I, 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 I know it. So I wanted to go ahead and do that. Plus, I have sus- my subscribers. I had several people asking me, "Are you going to be going to Dallas like you right. did that last time?" And I'm like, "Well, I, I can." <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I used my. I don't have the money to go on lo- lots of trips. I used my my uh, stimulus money to do this. This is the right. only way I could could afford to do it. Right. So. I'm I'm gonna go to that, but you guys talking to me about this. I, I pulled up the ACA convention over here on the right hand side, and I could possibly, depending upon how much it costs, pull Buddy, that off. Here. You're, you're talking to the ACA convention right here. First of all, you have education. You have speakers, doctors, scientists that come and talk. There's probably four speakers a day that are gonna educate you on every the, every cichlid you can think of. Yeah, not but only that. One in particular that I I I always want to see now, because you introduced me to him. Oh, Rusty Wessel. He, he yeah, will definitely be there. Rusty. I mean, if, if anybody anybody don't know who Rusty Wessel is, first of all, I thought that that was a Star Trek reference. I didn't think <laughs> his name was real. I mean, I thought that was somebody making fun of Chekhov. No, nope. but that's I have some of Rusty's uh, Salvini in my fish room, the real Candelaria. He's, Love him. Those you, fish, wait a minute, Kenny. Those fish are wild caught, and they have some of the best color you'll ever see. Those oh, dude, ones. I've got them. I've bred them out uh, twice already. That amazing those, colors, dude. Amazing. Those those fish you see at Petco don't even hold a candle to what you have in your tank. But we Kenny. wouldn't even have Honduran red points if yeah. it weren't for him. And yeah. that's that's the clincher for me. Anybody that looks up a Honduran red point and they go to Wikipedia, his name's there. Yeah. He is the person that discovered the Honduran red point. And <laughs> I'm not going to take credit for it, but I believe I introduced you to him. <clears throat> yes, that's that did mention that you had <laughs> introduced me to him. And now anytime I can get the opportunity to, to just, you know, gnaw on his brain a little bit, I'm all about it because he's the Central American cichlid guy that, you know, besides you, of course, Kenny. Yeah. And had he been an active member of greater Portland Aquarium Society, he might have seen him speak while he was here. Maybe, perhaps. <laughs> yeah, well, we're not going to get it, guys. <laughs> but so these I, two guys have a lot of uh, a lot of Central American cichlids and South American cichlids. I I focus predominantly on South American cichlids, but I mean I, this guy behind me. It's not a South American cichlid. He's a Central American cichlid. Absolutely so. right. So I'm going to take you off the hook here. Let's I just be that. happy that we can go to conventions. I mean, after right. all this pandemic, I'm just happy that we're even talking about it. Right, Kenny? I mean. Yes, sir. Do you guys know if that's even a, a definite in Missouri? That's Missouri is lax as can be right now. I heard they're demasking. Yeah, but- yeah. Okay. Because Texas yeah. has lifted all of its restrictions. That's part of the reason why I went ahead with Missouri's Texas. real close. Right. Yeah. It's it's a it's a done deal as far as I know. Scott, I got a couple things I wanted to ask you. Okay. And there's somebody that that you introduced me to also at um, at uh, what experience? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to mess that up, so, so I'm not going to stammer until I get the right EA. word. EA. EA. It's in the game. Um, aquatic Experience, you you introduced me to her. and Uh-oh. I know exactly who you're talking about. She's a uh, super fish nerd. Super fish nerd. Cal- Callie, yep. Callie. She, she is- just recently sent me something asking me if I was going to be attending a convention and I wanted to know if you're going to be going to it. It's called the Northeast the Council of Aquarium Societies. Yes. And that is a virtual believe it or not, another organization I've worked with before. Um, I don't know if I'm going or not, Chris, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. She was asking you as far as doing some YouTube stuff too, or. Well, she wanted me to, to, to mention it on my streams, which I do plan on doing on my streams, but mm-hmm. um and then she would give me access to because it's an online convention; it's a virtual convention. So right. So let me. The Northeast NEC is the Northeast Council, and what that means is everything in the Northeast area. It's kind of like the United Nations. We all come together uh, this particular time of the year. All the clubs, and we have a big 
just a big, huge convention. Much like the ACA, there's speakers there. There's a huge auction. Uh, there's contests, photo contests, aquascaping, fish contests. It is quite honestly, and I hate <laughs> I hate to say this, especially after I just praise the ACA, but NEC is like my favorite convention of all time. Liz is too. We just have a blast there every year. But but I'm looking forward to that, and I was wondering, you know, I'm, I'm hoping you'll be able to attend it. I mean, you're not going to be there in person, and it's, yeah, it's, it's only virtual. a couple of weeks from now. Yeah, it's yeah. virtual. It's April 23rd yeah. to the 25th. I'll, I'll definitely be there virtually for sure. And that, so will I. <laughs> but I, I, what about you, Kenny? Are you going to be doing, going to check that out? I will have to. It's the first I've heard of it, so... I'll I'll send you a link. Um, it's it's a seven dollar registration fee and it gives you access to uh, speaker presentations, photography, like he's like he's saying, all that stuff. So money means nothing to Kenny. He's got it. It's he's flowing with it. It's seven dollars. I ain't gonna say that, but you know, seven bucks. I think I can find a good time. <laughs> he spends for seven that at bucks. lunch every day. He, he, he and it's like a it like whole that. weekend. So yeah, it's pretty fun. But Kenny, what's going on with you? I hear you are president of Fish Club now. What, what's talk to yeah, us? Yeah, that says of uh, March, they voted me in as the president of the Greater Portland Aquarium Society. Congratulations. And I took over, and we're going to have our first live meeting in over a year this coming Sunday. Can't wait. Got a bunch of bat fish that are ready, plants, shrimp. I got a whole garage behind me full of these beautiful 20 gallons and 55 gallons, all these cool tanks that I'm going to be taking for auction. You're finally going to be able to move your boat. I'm going to get that boat out and fish this year, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, literally, he, he has been, oh, yeah, he, he came and witnessed this, Scott. When I say it is surrounded, you could not move this boat any direction. <laughs> Where do you have that many that tanks? A, is that a well, some foot? of them are ours, but yeah. yeah. What is that, a 20 foot boat? Yeah, it's a 17 or 18 foot boat. So, and it's all the way up to the rim, sometimes a little bit above the rim of the boat. I mean, we're talking three, four <laughs> feet tall. He's oh, got them stacked. I mean, he gave me five tanks just because he wanted to get them out of the garage so he could walk. It's always <laughs> nice to have friends who are in the hobby. Trust yes, me. Yes, trust when me. You, when, it's like, because Kenny, I know you probably know this. When you go to an auction and fish are going for like a dollar sometimes because nobody wants them, you, you end up bringing. Up. You, you bring all these fish home that you didn't expect to bring home, and then all of a sudden they don't get along with the other fish. So now you're like, you got to find someone else to take these fish <laughs> off your hands. I'll tell you the truth, too, Scott. I'm the guy, like, when Ultima Angels are supposed to be bringing the bunny, yep. some guy's up there five bucks. I'll let him think, you know, just about where he thinks he's going to get it. <laughs> I'll say, $40. <laughs> so you're like that guy in Storage Wars. What's his name? Yeah. Yep, yep, what the fuck? Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> and then somebody looks back behind you like that asshole over there. Yeah, I, yeah, I dollars. Mean, I, I only do it on stuff that I believe should bring a lot more than what it's bringing. I mean, that's a $75 a copy fish. It's, you're getting and, five of them, you know. But, Kenny, that's not the only reason why you're doing it. You're doing it because that money goes directly back into the club to fund 100% the club. 100% goes 100%. to the club. 100%. You and know, I, I love like clubs. That too. When I when I was at the auctions when I when I was a member of the club, uh, there would be something that I wanted, and it was like my hand go up and my hand would just stay up. Mm -hmm. Anybody that would bid, my hand would just stay up. And he he did Kenny did it a couple times where he would be you know doing the announcing you know, and then we got five dollars, six dollars, seven dollars, eight dollars. Chris, you can put your hand down. Nope. <laughs> nine dollars yeah and my hand goes up and my hand don't go down until okay chris won that one and there's there a couple times when i i was like i got three hundred dollars that i want to give the club and i want to get some cool stuff at the same time so matter of fact i got some of chris's uh, the extremely large shrimp colony of cherries we have here came from this guy i got wow. him as he bapped shrimp one year and danny was wanting shrimp and now, thanks to Chris, I now probably have twelve hundred shrimp. In <laughs> I got yeah. five. That's all that's yeah. left of those shrimp. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I tell you, there's nothing like being in an auction. If you've never been in an auction for the first time, the dr drill and rush you get from being in an auction. Number two, if you finally find some fish you've been looking for and you find them in an auction, there's nothing like that feeling, and it, the prices can go really. 
when I go to the North Jersey Aquarium Society auction they have every fall, uh, I've seen plecos go for two or three hundred dollars. It's it's crazy. I mean, these are worth a hell of a lot more money than twenty five dollars. I am chop your leg off before I start at ten dollars. Give me twenty, twenty, twenty five, twenty five, little bit thirty, twenty five, little bit thirty, twenty five, thirty dollars, thirty five. 35 in the back. 40, he said. That's crazy. I mean. Well, if it's zebra plecos, I'm on that program. Show yeah. me. Let there be some zebra plecos land anywhere near this club. I'll be, my See, hand will oh, be gosh, like Chris. Yeah. I ain't never going down, man. I don't know much about plecos, but they start giving out these numbers, L, Z, L, this, and all of a sudden, it's like $400. I'm like, what the world? Well, there's two plecos in particular to just get my juices flowing. It's that zebra pleco and the leopard frogs. Hmm. Either of those ever came up, at a, I, I, I'll be like double-handed it, man, you know? <laughs> and those are the ones that are like, those are the expensive ones if you were to go to like Aquabit or whatever. Oh, yeah, dude. And you do a search for it, you're talking a $300 fish right off the Yeah, you're going to pay for five of them. You're going to probably pay a good 1000 to 1200 bucks. Right, right, yeah. right. So, but, Kenny, I want to get back to you because you guys know I built a club here in York, Pennsylvania. It's doing really well. So much so that we have our own event every year called the Keystone Clash. Do you guys have a speaker in your club every month, Kenny? How do you? We try very hard to have one. It, almost ninety-five percent of the time, we do. Like for this first one, we're doing more of a uh, get together, Q and A. Everybody just have a good time, talk because we've been so long apart. And then we're going to pick up back on schedule in May with speakers again. But can I can I offer you something? You gonna come out here and talk for us? <laughs> no. Oh, I'll, I'll be no. here. Yeah, man, I, I, mean, I, I, I thought I was gonna get. I thought I was getting like a, a, the of king. Of, I thought the king himself was gonna come out and give us some cyclic of course, talk. Of course, I would do that for you. Do you believe it or not? Rusty wants me to talk at his club. Now, how crazy is that? How am I gonna <laughs> talk at Rusty Wessel's club when he's the guy that got me into the hobby? He's my god. So. You know, can you imagine walking in front of Rusty Wessel and talking about the fish that he got me hooked on? There's no way. I was like, dude, Rusty. I'm so I'm kicking myself, about Scott. When I was on my fish fam tour across America, right? Roland had arranged for me to go tour R Rusty's house, oh. and I just ran out of time. I couldn't get there. So I Liz's couldn't. Liz's sister <laughs> lives in Kentucky, and she got a personal tour by Rusty Wessel of oh, his entire my. fish room. Oh. And I'm getting pictures from Liz's sister of all the tanks, everything. And I'm just I'm just nauseous because I'm like, this should be me. So we're gonna head over and, and you know visit her sister this year, and then head over and see Rusty. But what I wanted to tell you about, you guys are gonna think I'm an ACA salesman, but I used to run this program. It's called the ACA Speaker Program, Kenny, and this particularly for you, the program will give your club or you $150 to cover the speaker's cost and, and all that. All you have to do is fill something out, put your request in. There's a list at the ACA of all the various speakers, and uh, oh, wow. you will get approved for it, and then they will pay $150 of his cost. Now, if it's more than $150, you're going to have to cover the other costs. We don't but, care, man. We got we got to spend money this year. That's one thing our accountant told us. We got to spend money this year. Well, that's a good situation because some clubs yeah. don't have a whole lot of money. But Yeah, we've got a good amount in there right now. Good. So. I just want to throw that out there to you. There's actually a list of all the speakers that's available, including Rusty Wessel, Odd Conning. So definitely check that out and apply for it because – Scott, uh, Scott McLaughlin. <laughs> I, I I've done some talks before. I wouldn't mind doing it again, but we'll you fly know. you out here. We'll even feed you while you're here, man. <laughs> oh my God! Just don't say food because I'll be <laughs> I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because you if you were here, then I would be able to feed you too. And you know, <sighs> French trained chef Scott. Yeah, I I know I know. <laughs> so I got to get back to you, Chris. You you built us this 500 gallon tank. You scared the hell out of me because every time you, you were like, I'm going on live and I'm going to fill up with water. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's got no fear, man. Water in front of everybody? What if it goes <laughs> wrong? You did not give a shit. You did it anyway. So congratulations to you. The tank looks well, fantastic. The the thing is, uh, before that, I went live how many times filling up the 300 gallon? And then yeah. it leaked. So it's leaking right there in that corner again. So this means I have to 
pull the seal all the way around the entire tank again and reseal the whole thing. So and it yeah. filled it and it leaked. And, but and that's thing, what I know. I was saying, hasn't he learned his lesson? Is he going to do this really? No, <laughs> no. But that's the thing that cracked me up about Chris, though. He didn't. He didn't let it spasm out. He'd just be like, "Oh well, you got to go back to the drawing board." You know, he didn't let it spasm out when it started leaking. Yeah. I would have been like, "There's no way it would have worked for me, Chris," because I would have been, <laughs> I would have been spinning, dude. It would have been big well, trouble. This, this thing leaked twice, right? But I know. I, each time it leaked, I was like, "Okay, well, it leaked." in the front there's got to be a pinhole somewhere and right i still had half of a kit left of the the pawn shield so i just drained it again and so now i got to patch now it. i got to give you some hell because you finally get a 500 gallon plywood tank and then you put <laughs> angels in it and i'm like he's putting peacock bass in he's putting something huge in this tank i know he is and you Here put and you put angelfish and some other fish in there. I got to tell you, though, it looks absolutely fantastic. It looks you're, you're kind of going with the Piaba, you know, South American. It's look. Definitely Piaba. The the goal was the main goal was to help promote Project Piaba with its it, the, from the beginning. It was a Piaba tank. Um, the, the goal was to be actually a portion of the Rio Negro. Um, yeah. But uh, they're all South American cichlids or South American fish. There's nothing that is not native. Uh, we got, of course, there's uh, Peruvian Altum angels, which are basically just Scalare. Uh, there's Rock Hill Severum. Um, true blue Ocaras in there. Chris, um, that tank is spectacular. Rams, black skirts. Two Bolivian rams. And that, that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. That, that tank is spectacular, Chris. I would love to try to pick at it, but I can't. I mean, you've got it naturally, Aquascape. It looks stunning. I mean. Well, thank what you. I, what can I say? I mean. Dude, I can't job. wait. You wait about six months to a year, and he starts having all the nice little natural crustaceans that are in that wood coming out. Oh, my they're, God. They're already doing that. There's there's uh, the wood that's down in the lower portion that had the moss on it. All that moss died, and now it's growing. It it. It melted. It's growing back. Yeah. So all that moss that was a was terrestrial moss. It wasn't intended to be underwater. I mean, this this is a log that was sitting out next to the lake, not in the lake. Uh, I just grabbed it, and now the moss is starting to turn green. So it's beautiful. That's, that's a good sign. Now, now, Kenny E, I'm not going to let you off easy because now I hear that you have a 300 gallon tank that you're putting angels in as well. They're not just any angels. These are true altums. Chris. These things are going to get, the males will get up to 17 inches from top to bottom. They're going to be yes. huge. Yes. Okay. And then I'm also going to put uh, 20 to 30 um, stir by Cory in for the bottoms. I haven't figured out what I'm going to use for my mid range yet. But yeah, these things are going to be a sight to see, man. Where are you getting the angelfish from? I already got them. I have a f good friend of mine from the Greater Portland Aquarium Society. I can just call his name as John. He don't like me to use his last name. Okay. But he's kind of like you are, sir. He's got magic water over there. I mean, <laughs> he he's one of, the only, one of the only guys in America, too, that just bred out uh, zebra acara, which those are extremely hard to breed if you've ever tried. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so he successfully took a wild pair of Altum Angels and got them to breed out. So the ones I'm getting are actual F1 Altum Angels. And these and they're are local? Yes. They're so large. That that they're, I'm they're sorry, gonna be, They're going to be a reddish, reddish orange color on the fins. Are they silver and black with reddish color? Or what? how do they? At the top fins and the lower fins are bright red. They got nice wow. red to them. And like I said, they're, they're, Right now, they're about this big, and the fins from top to bottom are like this, and then about that size the fish are. Incredible. I have them in a 75, so that's why we're expediting getting the 300 done by the next week or so, week and a half, because I want them in there before they start to really go. We're feeding them right now probably eight times a day because they are voracious eaters. I mean, they, they cannot get enough food. Wow. And like I said, we're doing water changes like three times a week on that particular tank, wanting them because I don't want them to stunt, you know? I, I think I know this answer, but I'm going to ask both of you. Discus or angels, which ones? Which ones do you, you want? Ooh. 
That's God. that's hard. Well, really? I thought you guys were angels, just like he's that. got both. I've, yeah, I I've like my discus both. too. Wow. Now you can't combine the two, right, Kenny? You can't put angels oh, and you, discus. No, you, you can. These guys are going to be. I'm going to keep them at 82 to 83. So discus would live in there quite comfortably. However. Mm -hmm. I want these angels. There's 15 of them, Scott. I mean, it, wow. imagine a school of 15 full-size Ultima angels cruising at 300. In a six foot long, or is it how long? Is your eight, foot, eight foot. Eight foot long. Oh, God, it's uh -huh. going to be great. So, so eight foot, two foot front to back then? Yeah, it's two foot, and then I think it's 30 inches tall, eight feet long. Nice. All right, That's All right guys. Smaller footprint than mine. For though. those of you watching this, go definitely want to check out Danakin Aquatics. I mean, that tank alone makes me want to. I, I wish I could subscribe twice. I can't wait to see that tank. It's going to be awesome. We're going to start doing. We're not going to be like Chris here. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm probably not going to be as detailed showing you guys. I will show you us building that we, we're starting on the stand again tomorrow. We had a little hiccup on that. But the guy that I have building the stands doing it right, Chris, he's putting the notches in there. So that way, yeah. the weight, and we can drill from the side and it's not putting You're all the weight on the. Screws. You're just supervising, right? You're not. You're not going to. I'm not touching. Okay. Chris, y'all okay. are laughing. No power Look, tools. Can you all see this? That's for me. Just doing a couple of hammers ah, off a chain oh yesterday. Kenny's not I hit, to use I power hit, tools. Yeah. I'm, I, if you're going to rely on Kenny E to get some construction done, you're in trouble, Mister. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> I Kenny's love really, honest, At least you're honest about it. <laughs> yeah. Kenny's really really good for moving stuff around, but not building stuff. No. If, if you if a power tool comes on, Kenny needs to exit the room because I'm liable to get hurt. Guys, can I say something? Thank you. Sure. This, very this much. makes my heart feel really good right now. Just good. us sitting back talking about fish. Yeah. Man, well, I, I know. Well, I got to ask you one thing. What's I, up, brother? I, I can't help. It. I got to ask the King Scott what is going on. <laughs> I've been watching you, and I know you're going through a funk, but you, brother, I'm looking at those beautiful tanks behind you. <laughs> I'm trying to put my head around, and I know the whole YouTube world wants to know what went down that's got you in such a funk all of a sudden. What's what's going on with you? Well. You know, I started a club, so I've been I've been doing stuff nonstop. I started a club that took a lot of time, a lot of effort. I joined the ACA. I joined a bunch. I'm on the CARES program. I joined a bunch of stuff. I did way too much, way too soon. Every time a convention came and someone asked, "Could I help?" I was like, "Yeah, I'll help." And poor Liz, she got out of it. She was like, "I, <laughs> I can't, you know, great for you if you want to do it, honey, but that's just too much." And so I think I've just been so focused on this fish stuff. I mean, Chris, you saw me at Aquatic Experience. You saw all that work. Hell, I mean, mm -hmm. thank God you were there, Chris, to help move all that stuff. I mean, it is nonstop work, promotions, and then trying to do YouTube and keep up with your fish and do 50-plus hours, you know, at work. It, it, and it, don't forget that lot. beautiful girlfriend of yours. Yes. Like. Yeah. Fiance. Let me say fiance. Because if Fiance. you watch this. And she said, his girlfriend, she's like, yeah. I'm your fiance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing, the needle that broke the camel's back was this guy right here. Oh, man. I, beautiful, right? This is a picture that Mo Devlin did of his uh, Trimax. I've had, I've had Trimax for four years, four or five years. And all of a sudden, like last year, I've, met, I've lost four of them. Like in a row. Just different times, but just out of the blue, I've just lost them. I've, everything else has been doing great, but for some reason, God has cursed me when it comes to Trimax, and it just it broke my soul, it broke my heart. And, and you guys are in YouTube, you know, if something, especially in my fish room, because all my tanks have a pair, that's it. And if something dies, <laughs> when you record, you're going to notice that, hey, that tank is empty. What happened to that fish? So, I have a responsibility to talk about what happened, not only because it's good ethics anyway to, to teach people that this stuff happens, but people are going to be asking questions about what happened to those fish. So all that put so, together just had me in a funk. These fish, you get these fish. You had one not too long ago, a, a Trimac that was older. It was past its breeding age, yep. and he wasn't doing so swift. He's been beat, he was pretty beat up. He was actually and, given to me. At first, they were going to sell it for $100, and they realized he was so far gone. They were just like, if you would take him, Scott, we'd be happy. So I, I ended up taking him in. And then now tell everybody what happened after you got him. <laughs> well, a week later, he actually bred, bred in my tank, believe it or not. So 
That was pretty so, exciting. So after that's, he, yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm trying to get at, Scott. Is he, I know it it hurts your heart. I mean, I'm going to be destroyed when Red goes. Yeah, uh, but it hurt. I know it hurts your heart, but at the same time, you got to remember, you're getting you're getting fish from people that have already told you, okay, yeah, they, they have. He hasn't bred in a year because of. You know, he's just too old or whatever. And you have him a week and you've got fry. A cloud. <laughs> I remember that. There yeah. was a cloud around yeah. that man. But the, so. the thing about it is that people are like, oh, you had him for three years? I was like, and he passed? That's great. I'm like, no, these fish should last 10, 15 years. And people don't mm -hmm. realize that, that, that that's their longevity. If you take yep. care of them, do right, 10, 15 plus years. You're not going to see me do a video every week of me going to the fish store because I don't because my tanks are full. These fish are supposed to last a long time. So that's why you don't see me at fish shops. And again, that's not a shot at anyone. That's just not what my YouTube channel is about. My YouTube channel will be about the fish that I have and the longevity that they're going to have in my fish room. And Kenny, you know that. I mean, look at your beautiful fish back there that you've had. Oh, yeah. Long time, <laughs> but Scott, I can tell you, I'm I'm one that doesn't sugarcoat, and right. you're probably gonna be mad because I might I might let a little curse word out. But if hey. I hear of you trying to get out of this hobby again, I'm gonna <laughs> hop a plane <laughs> and I'm coming out there and I'm gonna whoop your ass. That's what I'm gonna tell you right now. All right, <laughs> he's gonna bring me with him. Yeah. Oh my god, I don't want to hear this nonsense. You are an inspiration to a lot of people, especially us cichlid keepers. I appreciate that. Think about it, dude. There ain't too many choices out there. I'm not going to name, but there is one guy that I immensely enjoy along with you and I, who I've gotten a lot of my inspiration as well as you from is Andy Woods. I oh love what Andy God. does, man. I love Andy Woods. I mean, he was one of the guys I hope to get on our on this as well. Can you imagine Andy Woods being in here with us too? Uh, well, first off, I don't know how good I would have been. I would have been it's bad enough having sit next to you and then have Andy <laughs> down there too next to Chris. I would have been I would have been starstruck. I just would have been what the you know, but yeah, I've been watching him. That's how I ended up with the uh, hiatus cichlid here. Yes. Is because of Andy, such yeah. a gorgeous breed. Yes, it is, and it's a great showfish. If you get it large, it's a great showfish. It everyone I've ever seen always wins. So. Another thing with that, Scott, the whole getting out of the hobby or the out of the YouTube thing. Yeah. You do not realize how lucky you are. Really? Tell me. <laughs> Think of, okay. Let's see. The closest YouTuber to me, besides, <laughs> you know, is a is, you know, besides Kenny and a couple of our, our local friends, you know, natural aquariums and those guys like that. Uh, people from our club or from Kenny's club, because he's the president. Closest guy would be what, uh, Corey? Yeah. Three and a half hours? Yeah. You have Rachel Leary. In my backyard. <laughs> you live down the street from her. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember what happened when I went to the aquatic experience and I met her? Do you remember? Do you, remember? You, tinkled, you tinkled a little bit? No, that wasn't she you. She shook my hand and Another I came back one to you and I was like, she touched my hand. I'm never washing this oh, thing. He's yet. got Susie Q there too. He's got a little Susie he's Q. He's got the whole thing there. Post. You got everybody. Amber, over Bay there. City Betas. I can mean, I could just go on and on, man. Susie I mean, we've Q got some really awesome. we got some cool people over here too. I but... cannot wait to meet Susie Q. Oh. Ooh, talk about excitement. Yeah. There they are. There they go. So if you have a fish that you love and you haven't thought about showing them yet, you might want to think about it. Yep. It's an amazing experience. Oh, my wait. God. She is so awesome. <laughs> you got Chattanooga, Ed, Fish Room Fever. They're in, you're in uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. Yep. Bob Kaler's in Tennessee. Bob Kaler. You've got. Um, but that's not close. The whole, the, yeah, but if you had a problem, you could call the Ohio Fish Rescue. They could be there. Yeah, true. I mean, the, you got, you're surrounded by fish fam, literally yeah. surrounded. We have like we have some really cool people too. I mean, we got Corey and we've got Tazawa Tanks. And we got and Alex, Alex up there, the history of living in your aquarium. That guy's amazing. I love Red Alex. Fish, blue fish lives up there yeah, too. Red fish, blue fish. Yep. Uh, Corvus Oskin, you, you know, and Steamfot, uh, Steamfot Aquatics. We've got a lot of cool guys, but we're not surrounded. 
Right. You are literally surrounded. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, you my go closest... to a local club meeting and you're going to have more than just a couple YouTubers there. Yeah, my closest relationship with a YouTuber probably is Rachel. We grew up in the same clubs together. We grew up. I don't know what this just did. All right, thank you. Can I take a video for real? Yeah, you're taking a video. Everybody say hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of and you call videos. yourself a YouTuber. We grew up in the Aquarium uh, Club of Lancaster County. And then when I started the Sickle Club of York, she was such a huge part of helping me that first year. I mean, it was, it's amazing. So yeah, Rachel I don't Leary's think awesome. she realizes how much I love her. She, she... <laughs> I think she does, Chris. <laughs> no, I don't think she does. I've, I've said that I like her a lot, but she, I don't think she realizes how much I like her. She's one of my favorites. Well, then you She's need to come to the Keystone Clash. Culture. Holy God, get this guy a towel, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I got I'm ready to show up. Where is your wife at right now? That's what I want to know. She's in the living room. The door's closed. <laughs> you better hope she doesn't watch this. <laughs> oh, wait. She does like your channel a lot, so yeah. you never know. <laughs> Well, God, you know, I appreciate it. I hope that explains it. Again, this is doing my heart great, just sitting back, having a good time. This is really what I needed. So I hope you guys will – we can do this more and more. What I was going to say is I think if this goes as well as I'm thinking it's going to, the live version, having people in the chat interacting with us, I think will be amazing. Because there is a lot of cyclic keepers out there. I, I, would love for that, I would love for that to happen. Here's the problem. There is a monopoly of live feeds, and I don't know where we would fit in at. It's just there's well, so you know what? we go I, wherever we want to. That's where we fit in. And the Chris. other thing is there might be a guy that has two nights that he might forego one night for something like this. I wouldn't like this. ever want you to do that. But, you know, and Chris, you know we can't do that because I've had YouTube enemies, and I don't want to have any more enemies. And if you just step on their toes and start streaming when they're streaming, that's usually I'm not actually. I've had Candy Overhauls tell me that directly. If you want to stream, stream. Uh oh, you're going to put because, Candy on the spot now. <laughs> I mean, no, Candy is the queen. Nobody talks, no, no. You yeah. talk down to Candy and you, you don't just get her telling you what for. You get like half of the fish fam that knows right. about her and the other half that don't. It's yeah, she's exactly. awesome. I could probably, yeah, no. Scott, arrange where we'd go behind somebody that's pretty significant in the fish world. One of my spots is pretty primo on a good night, Friday nights. And if you wanted to do this, I, I would be more than willing. Let's let's get it going. It's already an established good spot. And, and I'm would, off on would Friday, knock so it I out. totally do that. Well, here's, here's the thing. Number one, if you guys are watching and enjoying this and you've heard something that resonated with you, there is the applause button. Now, it's live feeds. You can do super chat. There's an applause button down there. Hit the applause button. Tell me who you're sending the money to and why, and we'll make sure that person, whether it's Kenny or Chris, gets that money. Uh, second send it thing, to this guy. Send it to, send it to this send guy. It to, send it to that guy up there. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, you, you super chat to the channel. You send it to chat. this guy. He needs ACA money. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes. I'm about to send it to Scott, and Scott can just make sure that I get great applause. If you guys case. want to help Chris get to the ACA, because Kenny and I are going to be there, hit that applause button, send some money. You know, YouTube takes what 40% of it, 50% of it. About that, yeah. It's crazy. And we'll send that other half to Chris because I would love to see him again. Hell, you came all the way to the aquatic experience. I know that was a trip for you, right? And you guys yeah, want to help yeah. him out because before we started this, Chris had told me that if for some reason, if he doesn't make the ACA, that old red right there is coming to Danik in Aquatics. That fish Ooh. right there. Oh, that's some fiction right there. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking serious, like science fiction going on right here. Because this fish is never leaving this fish room. Chris, till you the die, only, you know I'm always going to be taking swings and getting old red into Danik. You know, in the old red, the only time old red's going to leave this fish room is to go to an ACA so that he can win. Ooh. You guys, are, you guys are braver than me, man. I just, and I've talked to you personally about yeah. this several times, yeah. Chris. I just, I just don't want to take the risk of losing one of my favorite fish. Yeah, because things happen. You know what I mean? If that something is, happened to that fish, I'd never that, forgive myself. You but know? see, is, the thing is, red would be in a container in my lap, 
in the airport. Yeah, I get all that, bro. But uh, <laughs> sometimes things happen that are out of your control. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah, the plane would have to crash for it to be out of my control. No, but that's uh, just my point. I mean, I just i I got a lot of beautiful I'm not worried I think about would... as much. You know, I'm dying too there. So, but yeah, yeah no, I, dude, you got. It's a legitimate yeah. fear, Kenny. Trust me, it's a legitimate fear. Someone like me who's run a bunch of shows, I haven't had many deaths at, at fish shows, but it's certainly when you take a fish out of its regular environment haul them hours away and put them in a different fish tank and have thousands of people poking at your fish for right. two or three not days. Knowing, not knowing who others' fingers they were poking in, you know, and it's just been my fear. Yeah. It's a legitimate fear, and that's why a lot of people uh, don't show anymore. And that's why I'm very selective of where I go because I got to know it's there's going to be a rusty vessel there that knows what the hell he's doing and make right. sure everything's taken care of. So and that's that's – the other reason is, you know, I, I wouldn't go to, you know, Joe Schmo Aquarium Show and bring Old Red. It's right. going to be an ACA event. It's not going to be anything else. I wouldn't yeah. even bring it to if they had, you know, South American or Central American Cichlid Show besides the Flower Horn Show that they have. I wouldn't bring Red to Aquashella. Yeah, because but I, I don't know who's going to be there to supervise my fish. But understand this, Kenny, at the Aquatic Experience, first place won $500 for their winning fish. I actually was the reserve best of show, and I took home $250. So it's it's a risk, but, you know, if you got a show-worthy fish, it definitely will be a problem. I mean, this guy here in the last year, he should be in a funk, but he's not. You could learn a lot from this guy. He had that bad situation happen where he lost a lot of – what happened that time, Chris? You lost – you lost a lot of beautiful fish. I on lost that deal. rare fish. Um, I know. Really, Chris called me up one night because dude, I he was that night when yeah. it happened. And Dan, I, did you go help him or? I, I mean, helped him. I helped him. With, I I would have been melting down if he would had me there because I know I'm around this guy quite a bit. So I know his fish are like they are to me, you know, right. and he was a mess. The boy was a mess and I don't yeah. blame him. I mean, he lost some yeah. good. I was crying on the phone with Scott. I mean, literally, yeah. I, I don't do that very often, but yeah, I Scott must have that ear phone. or something, man. Cause I called Scott or, or texted back and forth when I lost Susie, when she was going through her stuff, yeah. that trimec I lost. I mean, yeah. but I mean, you went, you just went through this, Chris, you just went through this yourself too. And yeah, it's yeah tough, it was it? rare, rare Severum that were wild caught and you know, inner idea Severum and, um, you know, I had 13 Severum in that tank and the 300 gallon lost its bottom seal and I lost everything in the tank except for my Tiger Oscar, my Eclipse Catfish and the bristle nose that you gave me, Kenny, which just passed away in the 500 gallon. A couple so days the ago. moral of the story is fish life, you know, fish loss happens and don't let it bring you down, right? Keep it yeah, all together, definitely. boys, because guess what? It's like I told you guys before the stream with my dragon blood colony over here i i was messed up man that heater heated up killed my entire stock of dragon bloods and my cayuga flamebacks and what i did is i just turned it around and put all my new honduran colony in there with some red devils and you know turn turn the thing around and took a negative and turn it into a positive you know yeah 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 i wanted to mention something about the the shows scott how many starry nights do you ever see at, at the at the shows very seldom. That is a West African, you know, Madagascar fish. Very yeah. seldom do I see them, but they normally do really well because they're just this spectacular. Guy's got a gorgeous one. Does yeah, he my, really? Yeah, my big boy in the show tank. Uh, he is, he has staked off the other side of the tank that you guys can't see as well, Scott. But yeah, I've been breeding. He is too. every. Yeah, he's, that, he's every bit as big as the Tiger Oscar in here. He's nine inches now. Yeah, and he has got the beautiful flared fins. Hey, get up here, on deck. Can you see him coming up? Yeah, him right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me tell you, you were talking about the NEC convention, Chris. They're having yeah. a virtual fish show, Kenny. So, to your point, you don't want to take your fish out of the tank and take them somewhere. But the NEC convention, you can actually take video of him, submit it, and they are giving cash prizes to the best looking six. Ooh, I could you maybe do that. Yeah, I'm, so you, I might be doing that too with a with old red here. Yeah, the OCA I mean, did it last year. Uh, I, I entered that, and 
didn't win, but there was some spectacular fish in there. And you definitely yeah, want go ahead. that. Yep. You definitely want to make sure you take the best video possible of your fish. They're going to want you to put like a ruler up there so they can see the size of it. And well, that's a big yeah. guns. <laughs> Speaking of big guns, oh, boy. somebody's been playing with with cameras lately. Uh, and see, and that's doing, that's, doing that's, an awesome job. Thank you. I'm that's like, my, so my other phone. problem. I have gotten so involved in photography that I'm kind of not spending as much time in the fish room because I'm just loving it so much. I'm actually taking online classes. One of my heroes is Mo Devlin. You guys know him. He takes all the photography of like Tropical Fish Magazine and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I've been really into that. I need to find a balance somewhere. <laughs> between well, the there's, there's a balance there for you, man. You you're you got the the shadowing and the shading and all of that stuff. and which, it, which That's leads much me, better photographer than I am. Which so. leads me to you, Chris. When I first started seeing your channel, I loved your streams because you would actually do your artwork. And you were the first original person doing that. Doing no. your artwork. No? Someone else was doing no. it? Nope. Um, uh, Priscilla was first. She stopped and told me to do it. She's oh, like, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm burnt out on doing this live. You go ahead and you do it. And I was like, wow. okay, I will. And I took over. And, and when I decided that I didn't want to do the artwork live anymore, I told her, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm done doing that live. Can and, I ask you, was there a reason why you decided that? Um, to be honest, I was doing it for everybody else. I was doing uh. it because they, people wanted artwork. And people would ask me for drawings. Like, you know that T-shirt that you got that has the Oscars on it? Yes. That was a requested drawing from somebody from somebody else. <laughs> I actually can't remember who it was off the top of my head, but it, it was his lemon Oscars. It was a is his fish. It was a commission. Wow. You're like the only other person that bought the shirt. Wow. And that was the problem. Was I was I was making all this art and I was printing it off and I was giving it away to try to get my name out there as a fish art, you know, for the fish art and nobody was buying it really. Right. And but it I did get that. you into Piaba, yeah. right? I mean, they, they wanted you to do a book for them or. Yeah, I did a coloring book. I haven't given it to them yet. <laughs> Still have it. It's ready to go. I was actually going to bring it with me to. Um, Aquashella. Aquatic, yeah. Aqu Aquashella. They, I met them at aquatic experience again. Thanks to this guy right here this guy <laughs> this guy introduced me to so many people if at aquatic experience if you've been in the hobby as long as i have you'll meet everybody trust me so aquatic experience was that a virtual thing then or was it a live thing you went to it was live it was live well, then, baby. chris there's number two you said you this is your first time ever event true so that's that's two now that i've heard other than gotcha chris no. So we just got you again. That's that was another after. One. Somebody get this guy a lie detector. Aquatic, aquatic experience was. <laughs> Hold was up your hand. <laughs> last year, New York, New Jersey. Here's the fish keeper's Bible. Put your hand uh, on. Uh, aquatic experience was 2019. Yeah, that and I went to Aquashella before that. Yeah. Okay, so that's two conventions. Because Aquashella was March, and then I went to the aquatic experience that same year. Yeah. So the was AGA was first. Yeah. But we got to get the heat off of me and get it back on Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> so we, need to, we need to start talking about his bleaker eye, or is it a pollen eye? Oh. Chris, now, you want to put the heat back on you? Because anybody that knows this species can tell the difference. I understand you ain't been around them much. Bleaker oh, eye yeah. have a more Smaller distinct, spot? more distinct bigger spots with a little more blue in them and the pollen eyes are more of a white fine super tiny little dot somebody online said that that they uh they're the same species it's Chris. just a, a variant that there's I, a difference bro. keep hearing it Chris. Keeps, I keep hearing this variant thing. there's a difference bro <laughs> next next program we do i'm gonna get jim cummings on here and we're gonna straighten him out Oh, really? to get all situated, Cummins. right? Bring John Cummins. I've been wanting to talk to that man. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great dude. You'll you'll like him, but he definitely he speaks about Madagascar fish all across the country. I tell you, my dream, guys, is to have a Madagascar biotope with all that different oh, species. Yeah. 
Yes. That, would, would, that would be like a 500 gallon like Chris's guy. That's the only way you could do it justice because some of these bad boys get huge. I look at my hands shaking just talking about it. <laughs> He's thinking I mean, about it. Oh, dude, I met. They're like my new it to me. I want to I want to get a bike because they're so rare and unique and a good portion of them now are completely extinct in the wild. I mean, it's yeah. an area of, people don't understand. I mean, the whole bio system is gone. I mean, it because a man once again, yep. another fish that we'll never see in the wild again gone. Preach, Kenny. Preach it. Yep. Due to irresponsible human. Period. Yep. That I mean, is, you definitely want to join CARES because most of the CARES fish are Madagascar fish. So that absolutely right. Absolutely right. Oh, like you, man, that's was, the other thing I envy Scott for, Chris. He can get his hands on so much more cool <laughs> fish that we can't get on this side of the world, you know? <laughs> he, he's over here chuckling, but yeah. Yeah, he knows. Right. I just... You know, I just know some people. That's all. I Brother, mean, we I don't just, see Trimac cichlids rolling networking. around out here. We Very rarely do we see Trimac. Listen, when I was at Aquatic oh, gosh, no. Chris, I was having to push him to go speak to people. I was actually bringing people to him. Because uh, he was. He was. <laughs> I was like, he Chris, was also, he was the biggest cheerleader I've I've had with my artwork, too. Dude, I had you time. lined up with people signing your, you were signing autographs. He like had, you were Corey. <laughs> I had a line as long as Corey's line. You did. It was amazing. I was like, why is there a line? What are they in line for? He goes, you, man. I was like, I was, Kenny, I was down do? there. I was yelling at people, come get free, uh, what was it, free artwork? And he'll yeah. sign it. Man, his line was full. Well, you take, which one did you take all the shirts to, Chris? You had a bunch of shirts one time, that was too. Aquashella. Yeah. yeah. Aquashella. I took, uh, a custom shirt, which um, I'm going to move this camera for just a moment so you guys can see. I made a poster. I made two posters, one for me and one for Joey. Kenny, Kenny. DIY. Kenny, note to self, next time we got to have tricky cameras too because he's just outshining us right now with all his cameras. Right? I got four cameras in the fish room. Oh, gonna have to... <laughs> when I'm done with my fish room, I will have it all. Yeah. I've got done the studio already. You need already to reword that. I'm sorry, Kenny, but you, you need to not name yours a fish room. It's a fish house, okay? No, listen. I said studio, Chris. Listen, I said studio. Don't, uh, just gonna, don't there's only the, going to be one studio. Don't call there's going to be the fish dome. I call it a fish <laughs> dome now. Don't don't call it a fish uh, barn because then Mike will be suing you guys. Yeah, so just, oh, Mike will no, be no like right on rice, man. <laughs> Love but it. Mike. Mike's a good guy though. <laughs> yeah, you can. That's one thing. No matter what show you go to, I can almost guarantee you whatever it is, Mike Howe is gonna be there oh, with his van, definitely to give you a ride to wherever you need to go. Dude, and he brought his fish to the show out from hours and hours. It was at least an eight-hour drive. I wonder. He's going to the ACA, isn't he? Oh, I would assume so. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I'm maybe sure we can, going to. Maybe we can invite to him everything. to the next one we do, next podcast we do. Totally need to. <laughs> yeah. I am a handful in person, Scott, when you first meet me. And my arms are flaring. I'm just that guy. I just. Hey, I love it, man. I love energy. I love it. I, love I definitely it. got that. Think aquarium-related Tasmanian devil. <laughs> He's just like blah 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 blah. <laughs> his arms all over the place. So you guys, I've been putting up both your logos just so people can remember to subscribe to your channels while they're watching this. You know, some of you, some of my subscribers might not know about you too, and I definitely want them to check you out. So hopefully, you will see some subscribers. Your subscriber rate rising after this program, and hopefully, we'll keep doing this. All right. I have a question about that. Yeah, subscribers. Where are you at right now? Me? Yeah. In my fish room. Oh, where am I at as far as how many? Subscriber count. <laughs> uh, 8,400, something like that. Aww. When we met well, you... in person, you were at 5K. You had just hit 5K. <laughs> yeah. That's a year. Yeah. Well, if we, could, if we could get his head on straight again, the man would probably be at 25K by the end of this year. <laughs> Me and Kenny are a, a drop. I'm talking a drop in the bucket away from 2K. Yeah, we're, but both of you guys neck should be neck. We're both well over that. Something. Yeah. I mean, I get. I have to be honest with you, Chris. I get frustrated because I like your video so much, especially the diary thing. And when I don't see as many views as I think it should get, it makes me very frustrated because I'm like, I'm used to it. 
<laughs> I know, but and you, your mentality is what I need to have right now because you don't give a. You know what, folks? You will put out what you your stuff. You're proud about it, and you just keep going on. And I, that's the kind of willpower I need to have instead of. And you got to well, remember, haters will hate, Scott. Don't matter who it is, and, any, and I don't I, care what I, field you work in, what you do in life. There's always going to be a hater, and you know what it is. Yep, Nine yep. out of ten times, you know what it is. Jealousy. They yep. wish they could be where you're at. So since they can't be, they got to figure out a way to bring you down. That's the yep. way they look at it. Yep. The thing is, is that I I try to only put out knowledge, actual truth, like right. like you, yep. both of you guys. Um, guys, it's been over an hour. I don't know how it went what? so fast. Yeah, I mean, no, it's at almost that. an hour. Remember the. the you're gonna to have to edit out about seven minutes, so. Well, yeah, it. maybe. So it's, but but still, the, the, I want to. I don't before we go because I know you're you're fixing to wind up and and close it out. I mean, it's it's everybody's just got to remember because I got myself in trouble and I do that a lot because <laughs> I will just I will just say whatever the hell I want to. Right and be damned the fallout and I I got in trouble I had a cust I had a, a viewer a subscriber ask me a question and I read it wrong because I was having a bad day so I took it as a troll comment mm -hmm. and then I said something about it in a live stream with none other than Jason from Primetime Aquatics oh, wow. and I felt bad after because they watched the replay and then commented about wow I wasn't expecting that and I'm like yeah yeah you yep, gotta, yep. just got to remember that we're we're all hobbyists first yeah our majority of our knowledge is going to come from experience and the internet now somebody who's only got internet experience you're gonna to want to get a second opinion. I mean, if if all if all I ever said was if I was just a tape recorder, if I was a two year old, you know, every two year old walking around the living room, here's mommy and daddy talking, and then a half an hour later, they're saying exactly the same thing. Right. I don't. I try not to spew the same things. You know, I'm not a. I I, I can't find the right analogy. I I don't want to say something that i don't know for a fact right that's you're being why honest it's simple chris you're being honest with your people you're being real yeah. that's what why when i when somebody asks me a question about a severum oh it's on i'll talk to you all day about a severum right, right. same or, with me you talk about parachromas uh, or you know amphilophus i'll be talking about them all day long. Yeah. it doesn't matter which amphilophus that's mm -hmm. the thing yeah <laughs> It yep. can be any amphilophus. Any, Man, did you see his? It, it almost like little stars are going off on old Scott's face. He started talking those, man. All of a sudden, the fever's coming back. He's starting to get a little sweat on his head. He's ready. I, I shouldn't say this. It was like a hit of Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan, uh, we'll leave that alone. It's another conversation. <laughs> but to your point, Chris, and this is something that Kenny's going to have to watch now. There have been times where I've gotten some comments and I've always responded politically correct because not only do I have a YouTube channel, but I represent a club, I represent the ACA, I represent CARE. So you, I can't just be yeah. F you, F, you know. And now that Kenny's the president of Fish, Fish Club, I'm sure he feels that same responsibility. Well, yeah, when on. it's coming to the club, I got to watch. I, but I've always, Scott, been very careful on my channel with my language. Right. And people want to get into religion or or politics i don't allow it on oh, my yeah, stream no. yeah, right. you know i'm not i'm not i don't allow it and i'm a believer youtube was created for people to speak their mind and, and get into what they want to do so yep. my moderators on my channel know unless they're you know i mean just belligerently wrong i i let people if they got a bad opinion about me good or bad i don't want to bash unless it's something that they're just you can tell it's a troll but if it's a true true issue Right. Then I, I I want it to be open. I don't want it, you know, folded away. And that's one thing I've always tried to do is be honest with my my community, you know. Yep. 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 All right, and, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up yeah. because I have to go to work in the morning and you guys are three hours ahead of me. So we're closing in on ten o'clock over 45. here. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
That's well, I appreciate you having me up, Scott. It was a blast, man. It was everything I'd hoped it would be. Talking oh, man. with you two, man, it's you, been a blast. You guys have made my heart feel full. So thank you very much. And I also want to thank you, all the people that left comments on my last video. I got some really, really kind comments, and it means a lot to me. I haven't responded to them yet because I'm trying to get my head straight, but thank you so you know, much. We didn't everybody. even get to the comments that you'd sent us to, to talk oh, my, about. I, we've got like 20 questions we didn't even touch. So Guess what, guys? We're going to be going straight into questions next time we do hey, this. Hey, Scott, yes, just sir. remember one thing in close. If you have me going like this when I come back down this way, it's going to be ugly, baby. <laughs> All right. I don't want the snack now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kenny E., tell us, what, tell us what's going on with you. When are your live streams? When can we see you? Because I definitely I want live, I live stream three nights a week right now. Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern, I... I'm the co-host on the hot seat with Rob 93. Rob 93, definitely a great channel. I love that guy. And then on Talk Friday night. Yeah. yeah. Friday night. I can't keep. He's given me so much energy, Scott. Being with a young kid like that. I mean, he stands up here in his whole live stream. I'm like, whatever, you know. Yeah, you but me. then on Friday nights at 730, I follow Lucas Fretz and Danny and nice. I together on Friday nights. And then we do our normals. I call it the mother stream that we started it all with on live streaming our Sunday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. Chris, this is why we can't get on a live stream. I mean, <laughs> Kenny, you got like five blocks, of man. them. <laughs> <laughs> just playing with you, Kenny. I'm just playing with you. Well, that's why I said, brother, if you, you want to find a spot, I think I can arrange something, you know? Well, I don't... I don't want to mess with working, and your stuff is working, Kenny, so we'll, yeah. we'll figure it out. We'll see what the, the what people want. Chris, do you have us, what, talk to us about your schedule. When can we see you? What do you got going right. on? Well, I do my Diary of a Fish Keeper videos, of course, and I've been doing shorts in the middle. I don't know if anybody knows about the shorts thing. Yep, but yep. It's a less than a minute, and it's usually a video clip of one of my fish tanks or something along those lines. And then I've just started something new on Wednesdays. I only did it once, and that's part of the reason why I got in trouble. Because I'm actually going through my comments through the whole week and I'm saving questions that people ask and I'm going to do, it's a live stream where I just go over questions that people have asked and idea. try to answer them. Yep. Um, and then it, it gives everybody an opportunity on Wednesday to be able to, you know, hey, I've got a question about this or that. And I try to answer them as much as I can. But that is a uh, five o'clock on Wednesdays. And then the... Uh, Saturday stream is uh, 12 noon. All of this is Pacific time, of course. 12 noon Pacific with uh, Mary Page Flynn. We try to have a guest. This guy over here is like impossible to get a hold of when it's, when it's oh, I want to get, I want you to come on, man. Oh, we're Dude, you got primetime aquatics. You do not need me, man. I mean, that was awesome. You've had Rachel Leary. You've had a lot yeah. of top-notch people. That's awesome. I, I have. And I've had you on, too. <laughs> I appreciate that. And it's always been a blast. So, so yeah, that's, that's it. It's just, you know, just a couple of streams. You and then I, put up, I try to do at sure. least two videos and then two or three shorts a week. I try to keep it so the whole week is filled. But. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to try to get back to doing at least one video a week on Mondays as I used to do. And hopefully we can keep this program going. I hope people enjoy it. I've had a blast. I mean, you talk about questions. We had 20 questions lined up and we have been vibing so well. <laughs> An hour, <laughs> hour, 14 minutes hey. in, we still haven't even had a chance to start. I'll say one thing to you right now, Scott. If you want to get back into the live streaming vibes, I think you and Liz come on the show with me and Danny. We'll get you feeling oh good again, God. baby. Oh, my God. You know that would be huge. You two come on our show one night. We'll get you back in the, the live streaming the, the mode. girls against the guys? Oh, my God. Oh. Have, some, have some trivia and all sorts of stuff. Oh, yeah, that be could be dangerous. Oh, while, you're, while you're at it, Kenny, I could go ahead and send you that commercial that I made a while back from King King. That, that was a... <laughs> I got I a blast from the past that. for you right there, Scott. Remember the one where you and I are running to, to hug each other at a oh, fun experience? <laughs> I put that on Facebook because I was afraid of copyright strikes on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We could talk forever, but I'm going to cut it short. I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. It was a blast. I look forward to doing it again. Thank you, Kenny E., Danikin Aquatics, and thank you, Chris, Multitank Addictions. What a blast. Definitely go check them out, guys. Peace, out, Peace love, and soul. Talk to you guys later.
Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much.